Hollywood, California, Monday, April 19th. The Lux Radio Theater presents Joey Brown, Helen Chandler, Roscoe Carnes, and William Frawley in Alibi Ike. Lux presents Hollywood. Our stars, Joey Brown, Helen Chandler, Roscoe Carnes, and William Frawley. Our guests, Mr. and Mrs. Babe Ruth, and Russell Patterson, one of America's most famous artists. Our producer, Hollywood's foremost citizen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Our conductor, Louis Silvers. This hour of Hollywood stars and personalities comes to you direct from the Lux Radio Theater on Hollywood Boulevard with good wishes from the makers of Lux Flakes. To everyone, a hearty welcome. Before we start Alibi Ike, I have a tip for the ladies. You don't have to find alibis for Lux Flakes. From time to time, it seems to me I've heard women say, this dress has never looked the same since I washed it. But I never heard them say that about Lux Flakes. As a matter of fact, I have a letter here about a dress that took first prize in a contest after it had been luxed nine times. This friend in Massachusetts writes, I made my eight-year-old daughter a dress of very sheer voile. After the dress had been worn and washed for the ninth time in Lux, I noticed a contest for sewing. Appearance of material was a big factor. My daughter's dress looked so good to me that I entered it in the contest. It won first prize. That was two years ago. The dress is still in use and looks splendid, thanks to Lux. When you have a Lux dress winning over brand new ones, that's something. It just goes to prove, as the makers of Lux Flakes have always said, that any material that is safe in water alone is safe in Lux. And now our producer, ladies and gentlemen, director of more than 60 pictures, discoverer of many stars, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow afternoon, when thousands of baseball fans storm grandstands throughout the country cheering the opening of the 1937 season, they'll be honoring, quite unconsciously, a boy from Cooperstown, New York. Ninety-eight years ago, the boy borrowed a few ideas from a game known as Rounders, some from another pastime labeled One Old Cat, and adding a few of his own, gave the nation its most beloved sport, baseball. The boy was Abner Doubleday. Abner had his day, and it was a doubleheader. He not only threw out the first ball in the first baseball game, he aimed the first shot fired from Fort Sumter in the war between the states, in which he became a general. It's to Abner the schoolboy and the game he created that the Lux Radio Theater tonight pays tribute in presenting Joe E. Brown, Helen Chandler, Roscoe Carnes, and William Frawley in Alibi Ike. Our play is based on the Warner Brothers picture, which was based on the story by Ring Lardner, making a two-base hit. Put Lardner's dialogue in the mouth of Joe E. Brown, and there it enjoys a range and scope I am sure no other actor could provide. Uh, Joe warmed a bench with the New York Yankees for about four years and comes to us tonight as Frank Alibi Ike Farrell. In the part of Dolly, making her fifth appearance before our microphone, is one of the most accomplished and lovely young ladies of the theater and screen, Miss Helen Chandler. Applauded recently on Broadway in Pride and Prejudice and Lady Precious Stream. She played in London in Boy Meets Girl and is now starring in the same comedy on Hollywood's legitimate stage. With Joe from the original picture cast, we welcome Roscoe Carnes, to whom I gave his first important part, as Carrie, and William Frawley as Cap Finlay. And now, let's dust off the Lux Radio Theater's home plate. The players are walking onto the field. The batteries, Joey Brown, Helen Chandler, Roscoe Carnes, and William Crawley in Alibi Ike. Batter up, play ball. We go back a few weeks before the opening of the baseball season. Throughout the country is heard the old familiar thud of the ball and the glove, the sharp crack of the bat as a stinging grounder zips over the infield. In Winter Haven, Florida, the Chicago Cubs are preparing for the National League pennant race. Near the players' dugout, 
Cap Finley, the manager, is talking to the owner, who is optimistic about the team's prospects. All right, stick it right in there, Shorty. Let's see it. Ah, right. That's all right. Here you are. If I can make a prophecy the first day of the season, Cap, I have a good hunch we're going to finish a lot stronger this year than last. Yeah, well, we couldn't finish much worse than eight. You know? I have every confidence in you personally, Cap, and I've convinced the other stockholders to let you work it out your own way. Thanks, Tom. I wish you'd convince them not to sell Pennock. Well, you're sure to find a pretty likely pitcher among the ten new rookies. Why, there's one boy alone, Farrell, struck out 20 men in one game last year. Sure, sure. He was with the Holgate Terriers, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. But did they claim Lou Gehrig was playing against him in Holgate last year? <laughs> I'll bet I'll have to ring a cowbell to get him off the field. Well, I'm pinning my hopes on this Farrell boy. If he's as good as they say he is... Well, wait till he shows up, Tom. That'll be time enough for prophecies. Telegram for you, Mr. Finley. Oh, thanks. Let's see it, Mike. I never had a telegram yet that wasn't... Well, for the... What is it? Get this. It's from your white hope, Farrell. Listen. Reporting today. Sorry I was late, but my calendar was wrong. What? Oh, his calendar was wrong. Now, there's an alibi for you. Maybe you can pin your hopes to that. Well, it doesn't sound very encouraging. It sounds to me like we're taking on a screwball. Well, try not to worry, Cap. It'll all turn out. I'll see you up at the hotel. Okay, Tom. All right, you guys, get going in there. Come on, Terry, come on, Mac. Come on, get hustling in there. This ain't no junior prom, you know. What the... Hey, get that car out of here, will you? Get off the field, you bonehead. Get that... Hey! Oh, boys. Hey, what are you trying to do? Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Now, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute, will you? I'll take care of this guy. Get back to work there, you fellas. Go on, now, all you. Get back in there, I tell you. No hard feelings, boys. After all, I didn't hit nobody. Now, listen, you. Take that sardine can you're driving and get out of here before I kill you. Say, maybe you don't realize who I am. Oh, yes, I do. You're Ty Cobb, but you got your face lifted to fool the pitches. Now, listen to me. This is a ball club, and you're on the field. Beat it. Wait a minute. Ain't no ball club without a pitcher, unless they've changed the rules this year. Well, they've changed them, but not enough to let you into the park unless you're on a leash. Now, get out of here. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm on the team. My name is Farrell. Farrell? Sure. Frank X. Farrell. Well... Why didn't you come in through the gate and give your name at the office? Well, I was afraid if I let on who I was, all the help would quit work and come out and watch me. That's what used to happen when I played with the whole gate terriers. Oh, I see. Is that why you put on a disguise? Disguise? Hey, this ain't no disguise. This is my baseball suit. You don't say. Yep. Well, you ought to put a sign on it so folks would know. Ha, <laughs> ha. Hey, that's a good one, mister. Well... I'll be seeing you. Where are you going? I'm going out and slug a few. Never mind that. Come over here and loosen up your arm. Well, all right. You want me to loosen it? Gosh, it's as loose as goose grease right now. Hey, Carrie. Yeah? Handle a few for this guy, will you? Sure. Yeah, wait a minute. You better put a batter up there, too. Give me something to aim at. All right, Farrell. Toss up a couple. Sure. What'd you like to see first? My zipper or my clipper? (laughs) (laughs) Well, now, I don't know. Just, uh, suppose you just try your fadeaway speedball with a slow-up twist and a drop hook on the end. Sure. That's more special. Well, there she goes. Hey, easy on the speed, wise guy. What's the matter, catcher? (laughs) Sting your hands? Hey, Farrell, your calendar is still wrong. This ain't July. I know it. It's hot in July. Well, your arm ain't going to be hot in July if you don't take it easy. I am taking it easy. I never open up the first few weeks. Boy, look at that wind-up. Uh, boy, if you ain't open now... Say, how many games did you win last year? Only 28. Had malaria most of the season. <laughs> malaria, huh? Well, where can I send the rest of my pitchers to get it? Huh? Never mind, never mind. Okay, Kerry. All right, Cap. Come on over here, Farrell, and let's see you hit a few. Well, wait, I ain't warm yet. I could do this all day. Yeah, I know, but I'm just trying to save the catcher. Oh. Grab a bat there. Hey, Tex. Yeah? Whip up a couple here, will you? Sure. Go ahead, Farrell. Well, I never hit my best on Wednesdays. Now, don't you worry about that. I'll cancel all our Wednesday games. <laughs> That's a good one, Cap. <laughs> just show us how you hit on the 4th of July when it comes in leap year. Sure. Okay, pitcher. Come on. 
Throw her in there and put something on that potato. Come in. Uh, holy. <laughs> Boy, what a club. Over the fence, boss. Well, I told you I wasn't so good on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, it only cleared the fence by about eight feet, that's all. Well, I twisted my ankle when I swung. <laughs> Say, when I'm in form, I can clear that fence by 30 feet every time. And if I don't clear it... And if you don't clear it, then what? I'll knock a hole in it. <laughs> One moment, please. Hello, Winter Haven Hotel. I'll see if he's in. Hello. Page you, Mr. Sullivan. Page you, Mr. Blake. I Mr. tell you, Cap, this guy Farrell is the best rookie pitcher I ever saw. Why, he's terrific. That was only an exhibition game this afternoon, Tom. But he was good. Why, he struck out 12 men. Yeah, yeah. He looks good pitching strikes. But the first wild pitch he ever throws will cost us a game. Huh? What do you mean? The game will be called for darkness while he's still apologizing. <laughs> Hello, Cap. Are you ready to go, Cap? Yeah, sure. Tom, you know my wife. Of course. How are you, Hello. Mrs. Finley? Fine, thanks. And this is my sister-in-law, Dolly Stevens, Mr. Johnson. How do you do? How do you do? Well, if you folks will excuse me. Sure. We were just going to the movies. Have a good time. Uh, see you in the morning, Cap. Okay. Something on his mind, Cap? No, no. We were just talking about Farrell. Did you see the game this afternoon? Oh, I did. And I can tell you right now, the women are going to love him. He's awfully cute. Who? Why, Farrell, the rookie pitcher. Cute. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. We've got to get someone for Dolly. Oh, okay. Who do you like, Dolly? Cap, you're as blind as an umpire. Can't you see she's crazy to meet Farrell? Crazy to meet... Well, she'd have to be. Now, but Beth, I didn't... Go on, Cap. Round him up. All right, all right. The last I saw of him, he was heading for the billiard room with Mac and Carrie. I'll see if I can find him. Well... That's a nice shot, Kerry. Yeah, now let me see now. The 11 ball in the side pocket. Say, Farrell, is it absolutely necessary for you to crack peanuts while I'm making a shot? Well, it's necessary for me to crack them if I want to eat them. But not while I'm making a shot. Well, all right, go ahead, Mr. Kerry. You don't bother me none. <laughs> you miss, Kerry. Yeah, well, miss. who wouldn't miss a guy cracking peanuts? All right, your shot, Farrell. Well, let's see. What's the layout? Gosh, looks pretty impossible, don't it? Now, wait a minute. Call your shot. Gosh, I can't see so very good without my spectacles. Well, why don't you wear them, then? Gosh, I never thought of that. There, that's a lot better. Let's see now. The four ball in the side pocket, the eight in the corner, the six down in the end, and any others that happen to fall. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, you'll never make it. Well, a man can only try... Holy smoke. Five balls in one shot. Is that all? This stick must be crooked. Say, I'd use a hockey stick if I could make shots like that. Well, I quit. I'm not playing with no champion. Now, wait a minute, Kerry. Wait a minute. Hey, let me see those spectacles of yours, pal. Sure. Here you are. I thought so. There ain't even any glass in them. I know it. I had to take the glass out on account of hurt my eyes. <laughs> Guess I'll put this cue back in the rack. He'd like to go to bed, but he can't think up an excuse. Well, guess I'll say goodnight, boys. I ain't sleepy, but I got some gravel in my shoes, and it's just killing my feet. I should think they'd take them gravel pits out of the billiard room. <laughs> hey, that's a good one, Mr. Carey. <laughs> hey, Farrell. Yeah, Cap? Come here, will you? Sure. Good night, fellas. Yeah, good night. Oh. Good night. <laughs> oh, boy. That guy is the original alibi Ike. Yeah, he's got an alibi no matter what he does, good or bad. Yeah, but at that, he ought to make us a good man, Kerry. Yeah, unless that gravel in his shoes brings back his malaria and throws his eyes out of focus so he can't read the calendar and find the home plate. <laughs> <laughs> So we thought you'd like to come along with us, Farrell. It's a swell picture. Well, I'd like to, Cap, only... You ain't turning in yet. Who, me? No, no. But I ought to stay around the hotel in case there's a telegram. Why, you expecting one? No, not exactly. But there's a lots of times that comes when you ain't expecting them. Oh, here's the girls now. Oh, you all set, Cap? Oh, evening, Mr. Farrell. Good evening, Mrs. Finley. Come here, Dolly. I guess you recognize Farrell from seeing him play. This is my sister-in-law, Farrell, Dolly Stevens. Huh? How do you do, Mr. Farrell? Well, uh, gosh, I... I mean, how do you do? I hope 
you've been telling Cap you can go to the show with us tonight. Well, sure. No, he can't. can't come, Dolly. He's got to stick around for a telegram. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess it's no use anyway. You see, the office where that telegram might come from ain't open after 6 o'clock. Oh, I see. Come on, folks. The car's outside. Well, <laughs> let's hop in and get going. I like riding in a rumble seat. Don't you, Mr. Farrell? Some people don't, but I do. Well, keep shouting the fresh air. Ball players need a lot of fresh air, you know. Yeah. I saw you play this afternoon. You struck out 12 men. Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, I had an off day on account of my lumbago. Say, if I'd known you was watching, I'd have struck them all out. Would you really? Sure. I was just taking it easy because it was an exhibition game. Well, now you're just being modest. No, no, I ain't modest. Only I don't never brag. Because if a guy has really got the stuff, he don't have to brag. Uh-huh, I guess that's right. Say, uh, are you going to be around much? I mean, well, uh, are you... Are you going to be around much? Well, <laughs> I'm staying for another week or so. Oh, gosh, that's swell. Then maybe I can be seeing you around, you know, around the hotel. That is, if you're going to be around much. <laughs> well, yes, of course. And, well, maybe we can sort of get together, you know, go to a show or out for a walk. Oh, I just love to walk, Mr. Farrell, don't you? Well, they say it's awful good exercise. <laughs> Mr. Short, paging Mr. Seaver. Your deal, Mac. Yeah. Oh, hey, Kerry. Kerry, look who's coming across the lobby. Alibi Ike himself. I'll bet he's got another date with the cap sister-in-law. Yeah. Hiya there, Ike. Oh, oh, hello, fellas. Where you going, Ike? Oh, no place special. Just out. Well, it's raining cats and dogs, Ike. You'll get soaked. Oh, I don't mind that. Nothing like walking in the rain to keep your arm in shape. Well, how about Mac and I coming with you? Yeah. No, 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 you better not. You fellas might get a cold. Oh, Francis. I'm ready to go if you are, Francis. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, so long, boys. This way. Uh, this way, Miss Stevens. All right, Francis. Ha, ha, ha. Did you get that? Francis. <laughs> He's alibied himself out of his name. <laughs> If you're getting wet, we can go back to the hotel, Francis. Gosh, no. I like sitting in the rain with you. <laughs> the park is kind of deserted. Sure. That's why I like it. Yeah, I like it, too. Do you? No kidding? Yes, Francis. Oh, gee, I, I wish... What? I wish you wasn't going north tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, but the team's leaving in a few days, too. You know you're crazy for the season to begin... Oh, I do hope the team does well, Francis. Cap's whole future depends on this season. Oh, Cap ought to stop worrying. I feel fine. <laughs> I just can't wait to read about your winning that opening game. Yeah, but, but you won't be there to see it. No. Oh, I hate going home and leaving... <laughs> well, leaving the club. <laughs> You'll write to me, won't you? Write? Well, sure. But, but gee, Dolly, I... I wish, I wish I could tell you. What, Francis? Well, how much I, how much I... How much you what? Well, how much I... <laughs> what, well, Francis, you're getting a cold. No, oh, no, I ain't... <laughs> oh, come on, Francis, we've got to get back to the hotel. Well, I guess maybe we got to go back, I'd hate to ruin the team's chances by getting sick. Well, Dolly, your train ought to be here pretty soon now. Yes, pretty soon. Of course. Of course, sometimes they're late, you know. Yeah, they don't always run on time, do they? No, you, you see, sometimes they, they get behind in their schedules. Oh, I see. And that's what makes them late. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. Gosh, I... Dolly, I wish this train wouldn't never come. Oh, do you really, Francis? Yeah. Oh, gee, Dolly. I... Oh, 
Oh, gosh, there it comes, and it's right on time. Oh, then I guess it isn't late. No, right on time, just like I said. Well? Well? Francis, I... You know, I think there's something in my eye. Would you look? Sure. I... Wait till I get my handkerchief. Which eye is it? Oh, oh, you'll have to come closer, Francis, much closer. Francis. Well, Francis... I, I don't see nothing. Oh, well, never mind. I guess it's all right now. Say, I, I wish you'd keep my handkerchief, though. You, 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 you might get something in the other eye. Yeah. yeah, but you might need it. No, no, not me. Say, when I see something coming, I always duck. Oh. Well, anyway, I'd, I'd kind of like to have you keep it, you know, to, well, in case you need it. I'd love to keep it, Francis. Oh, gee, gee that's great. Well... Well, I, I, I guess there's nothing more to, to say. No, I, I guess that's about... No, it ain't either. Oh, Francis. Dolly, Dolly, I gotta tell you something. I hope you don't get mad or nothing, but... Yeah, go on, Francis, quickly. Dolly, listen. Listen, Dolly, because cause it's awful important. Oh, Francis, hurry. Dolly, Dolly, I... I... <sighs> No, 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 I, I... Uh, uh, Dolly! Oh, goodbye, Francis! No, 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 I... Uh, wait! Goodbye! Wait, Dolly, wait, wait, I... Dolly! Dolly, listen, I... Uh, <laughs> ah, shucks. First, I want to take you to a kitchen shower the girls are giving for Betty Ann, who is to be married on June 5th. <laughs> you girls are perfect darlings to give me all these grand shiny pans and things. Oh, look. There's still a package you haven't opened. So there is. Why, it's a big box of Lux Flakes, and here's a card. It says, the most valuable thing I could give you. Ask me why. Signed, Helen. All right, Helen, tell her. <laughs> when the girls told me about your shower, Betty, I said to myself, there's one thing this old married woman has found out, and I think it's something a bride should know. I'm all ears out with it. <laughs> well, you may not think it's not important now, but honestly, it makes a big difference how you wash your dishes. Oh. No, really, I mean it. There's just no romance in dishpan hands. Men may respect them, but they don't admire them. So, my advice to you is to steer clear of kitchen soaps for dishes. I found them very drying. Sooner or later, they give you dishpan hands. But you can bet your life, Lux never will. Thanks a lot, darling. I'll stick to Lux. Remember, Lux has no harmful alkali. Nothing to dry and roughen the skin. And it costs next to nothing. Hardly one cent a day for all your dishes. And now, Mr. DeMille. On with the story of Alibi Ike. Starring Joey Brown, Helen Chandler, Roscoe Kahn's, and William Frawley. It's two weeks later, the night before the big opening game. In his hotel room in Boston, alibi Ike Farrell is sprawled face down across the bed, reading a letter. The letter is from Dolly Stevens, and Ike's expression is the essence of bliss as he reads softly. Dear Francis... I'm so thrilled I can hardly write. Bess tells me that Cap may let you pitch the opening game. How I wish I could be there to see you win. Gosh. Hi, I. Hi, boy. Oh, 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 hello, fellas. Hi, Gary. Hi, Mac. Say, what are you eating there, Ike? This? Oh, it's uh, just a kind of a letter. A bill? No, no, it's not exactly a bill. It's a, it's a letter from a fellow I used to go to school with. Thought you told us you never went to school. Yeah. Yeah, but this wasn't no school. It, uh, it was a it was a college. Well, how could you have gone to college if you didn't go to school? I didn't. Uh, it was the other fellow that went to college. I would have went, but there wasn't no college where I lived. No? Thought you said you lived in Kansas City. Well, I did, but we moved. Uh-huh. Where'd you move to? Nebraska. <laughs> well, they got colleges there, ain't they? Yeah, well, we didn't live right in Nebraska. 
near there. Oh. Say, you get one of them letters every day. What does your friend write you so much about? Oh, he's telling me about a ball player, a friend of ours. Tells me what he does every day. Yeah? That looks like a girl's writing to me. Well, a girl did write it. You see, that's my friend's sister writing for him. Well, didn't they teach writing at this college where he went? Sure, but... But, but he got his hand cut off on a railroad wreck. Well, uh, I should think he'd have learned to write with his left hand by this time. Well, it's, it's his left hand that's cut off. <laughs> and he was left-handed. <laughs> good night, boys. Yeah, good, good night. night. Hang on, paper. Cubs win overnight. Harold pitches no hit game. He uh, read all about it. And so you see, Dolly, the Cubs and me has practically cinched the pennant, almost, period. Next two weeks, we'll tell story, and as I will pitch two times in next two weeks, all is over but shouting, semicola. Yeah, who is it? Come in. Good evening, Mr. Farrell. Hiya. My name's Crawford. You don't know me, Mr. Farrell, but I'd go through fire and water to shake hands with you. Oh, you don't have to go to all that trouble. I'm glad to shake hands with you. Well, thanks. You're the best pitcher I ever saw. Well, maybe I ain't the best, but I won an awful lot of games this year. You sure have, boy. You're on your way to big money. Yeah, but... And you'll get it. You're a smart boy. Well, it ain't only that I'm smart just that I got the stuff that fools these other fellas. <laughs> you sure do. Yeah. I guess there isn't anybody a guy like you couldn't fool. Uh, Mr. Farrell, I'd like to ask a real favor of you. I'm president of the Young Men's High Ideals Club. I guess you've heard about it, haven't you? No. Uh, well, uh, not, not exactly. <laughs> there's uh, one or two of our boys, uh, you know, we caught them drinking and things like that. Drinking? Say they oughtn't to do that if they want to make good. Well, now, that's just what I was telling them. And what they need is an example, Mr. Farrell. I want you to come over and meet them tonight and tell them some of the secrets of your success. Well, mister, it's getting kind of late. Yes, yes, I know, but uh, uh, we're having a special night. In your honor, we're going to let the boys stay up until 10.30 if you'll just come and talk to them. Well, okay, mister. I don't like to stay up late myself, but if it's to do good, I'm with you. Oh, come on, I let's knew go. I could count on you, Mr. Farrell. I've got my car right downstairs. Get my hat here. This is it, Mr. Farrell. <clears throat> right up these steps. You mean this is a house where they're holding a convention? That's right. Gosh, it's kind of dark, ain't it? <laughs> right in here, Mr. Farrell. tell you boys about smoking and drinking in my absence. Now put those bottles away and douse those cigarettes. And don't let this happen again. Okay, Chief. Come on out with the butts, you mugs. Come on out with them. It's all right. Put somebody in the snoot. Wait a minute, boys. Your president is right. Where would I have been today if I'd have smoked? I give up. Where? Quiet, Muggsy. <clears throat> uh, boys, I had a little talk with Mr. Farrell on the way over, and he says his next two games are in the bag right now. That's right, fellas. I can't lose. Oh, no. Uh, <clears throat> I neglected to tell Mr. Farrell that continuous winning is against the principles of the Young Men's High Ideals Club. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, against the principles? Well, uh, you see, Mr. Farrell, our motto is live and let live. Now, uh, what we'd like you to do is ease up a little in your next two games. Let the other team get a few hits once in a while. Maybe even let them win, just for the sport of it. That's the idea, isn't it, boys? Well, certainly. That's, that's the way. Wait a minute. Sure. That's what the just a minute, can. boys. I know it couldn't be true, but, but this sounds like maybe you fellas was trying to bribe me or something. Bribe you? Oh, no, no. Uh, of course, we might make you a little present, uh, say, ten or $12,000. I see. Good night, boys. No, no, Mr. Farrell. Now, wait a minute. Let me go. I'm wise to you fellas. You got me over here so as you could talk me into losing for you. You're nothing but a bunch of gamblers and cheats. Let me out of here. Come here, Lefty. Come here, you. Wait a minute, out. Now, Farrell, we don't want to be nasty about this, hey. and you're interested in health, aren't you? Well, sure I am. Think a man ought to keep his strength up, don't you? 
Yeah. Well, let me show you one of my strength secrets. Ow! Hey, let go! Let go my arm! Now, now just imagine me doing that to your pitching arm. Only finishing by breaking it off. Understand? Ow, ow! Let me go! I understood all the time. I just wanted to be sure you fellas wasn't kidding me. Good. That's all. Now, here it is. We want you to lose your next two games. There's 12 grand in it for you. How about it? Not on your... What? Well, sure. I, I know just what you mean. You better. And remember, Farrell, this is your last chance for an easy lesson. You lose the next two games you pitch or else. Understand? Or else. Telegram to Mr. Frank Farrell, Hotel Continental, Boston, Massachusetts. Dear Francis, arriving tonight to watch you win your next two games. Thrilled at thought of seeing you again. Signed, Dolly. Francis, it's beautiful out here tonight. I love rowing. <laughs> you do? Well, I'll, I'll let you handle the oars for a while if you want. Oh, no, I mean, well, just being out here on the lake no. with you. Yeah, <laughs> sure is nice. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't go to the show with Cap and Bess. So am I. We couldn't have seen the moon so good in there. <laughs> Is that the only reason you didn't want to go? No. Gee, I, I wanted to be alone with you. I didn't want no other people around us. Do you mean it, Francis? Mean it? Gosh, I wish I could tell you how much I mean it. Dolly, I I got something for you. Maybe, maybe that'll show you. Oh, you got something for me? Yep. Now, where is it? Let's see. Gosh, I had it right here in my vest pocket. Oh, Francis, what is it? Well, but first I want to ask you something. Yes, Francis. Dolly, do you like me well enough to... to be alone with me for a long time? Forever, Francis. You mean it? Of course I do. Sink or swim? Yes, Francis, dear. Sink or swim. Then look, Dolly. Oh, oh Francis, don't stand up in the boat. Well, I... Francis! Oh, oh, Francis, where are you? Help, help! Uh, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me a rope. I'm, I'm sinking. Francis, try standing up. Huh? Well, gosh, I can stand up. <laughs> gosh. It's only up to my knees. <laughs> uh, are you all right? <clears throat> sure, but I'm all wet. Look, Dolly, here's here's what I had to give you. It's a it's an engagement ring. Oh, an engagement ring. Yeah. Oh, an engagement ring, Francis. Look out! Look out, Dolly! Don't stand oh, up in the. Oh, it's tipping over. You, it's tight. <laughs> Gosh, now her both are wet. <laughs> Hello, Hotel Continental. One moment, please. Hello, Hotel Continental. Mmm, so that's the sparkler. Well, it certainly is a peach, Dolly. Oh, Bess, I'm so thrilled. Where is Francis? Do you know? They're over in the card room with a couple of the boys. You going out tonight? Well, we were going to the theater if the boys would let him get away. Yeah, I'd better go and call them all. No, no, you ain't leaving yet, are you, Ike? Sorry, fellas, but I just got to. Well, where are you going? Oh, just to the theater, I guess. All by yourself? No. A friend of mine's going with me. Well, what do you say if we go along? Yeah. Well, I ain't only got two tickets. Ah, we can get some more seats. They're all sold out. Well, the scalpers will have some. Sure. Yeah, but you don't want them. Show's rotten. Well, <laughs> I'll buy your tickets from you if you don't want them. Nope. I wouldn't cheat you. Well, say, what are you going to do with your girl? Leave her here at the hotel? Girl? What girl? <laughs> the girl you had supper with. Oh, oh, her. Oh, oh, gosh. She just happened to sit down on my table, that's all. Uh-huh. Is that why you gave her that ring for sitting down? I... I give her the ring? Well, didn't you? Oh, oh. 
No, no, I didn't exactly give it to her. I lent it to her. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I wouldn't lend no ring to no strange girl if I was you. Oh, I guess she's all right. I'm kind of tired of the rock anyway. When a girl asks you for something, well, what are you going to do? Well, so long, boys. Now, now, wait a minute, Ike. I got a bet with Mac, and it's up to you to settle it. I bet that you and Dolly were engaged to be married. Huh? Or no. Uh, not exactly engaged. Now, look here, Ike. This costs me real dough if I lose. Now, cut out the alibis and give it to us straight. Cap's wife told us you was roped. Well, I don't want it to cost you no money, Carrie. You win. Well, <laughs> well you got a swell girl, I guess. Yeah, she's a peach. You're a lucky guy, Ike. Well, I guess she's okay. I don't know much about girls. Never seen none that I'd fall for. <laughs> that is, till you seen this one. <laughs> oh, well, she's okay. But I wasn't thinking about getting married yet a while. <laughs> Say, who, who done the asking? Her? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not exactly her. But, but sometimes a man don't know what he's getting into. You take a good-looking girl, and a man generally always does just about what she wants him to. Say, the girl isn't living that could lasso me. That is, unless I wanted to be lassoed. Oh, I don't know. When a fella gets to feeling sorry for one of them, it's all off. Well, so long, boys. So See long. you later, Ike. So long. What? What, well, Dolly? I, I didn't know you was waiting out here. No. Well, it happens that I was. And it also happens that I heard every word you said in that room. Dolly, oh, oh gosh, listen. I didn't understand you were just feeling sorry I... for me. But you're right about one thing. It's all off. Oh. Here's your ring, Mr. Farrell. Oh, gee, Dolly, wait a minute, Dolly. I, I didn't mean it. Honest, I didn't. Dolly, you gotta listen to me. Let me explain. I don't ever want to speak to you again. I'm sick of your alibis. Oh. And I've no intention of spending my life with oh. a man who apologizes for me every other word. Goodbye. Dolly. Wait, you, you gotta... Wait a minute, you can't do this. You don't understand. It's all a mistake. Going up. I... Dolly! Gosh. An identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNX, Los Angeles, the voice of Hollywood. Alibi Ike will be back in the box pitching for the Lux Radio Theater again in just a moment. For that moment, we will talk with a real baseball player, considered by many the greatest of all time, Babe Ruth. You know him, of course, as the home run king, with 714 home runs in his crown. But when Babe started out with the Boston Red Sox in 1914, he was a pitcher. And to this day, he holds the record for pitching the greatest number of consecutive scoreless innings in a World Series. In three games, he pitched 29 innings without allowing one run. At this moment, Babe Ruth and his charming wife are listening in the trophy room of their home on Riverside Drive in New York City. They're going to speak to you from there. The Sultan of Swat and his lady... Mr. and Mrs. George Herman Babe Ruth. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I would like to tell you that Mrs. Mill Ruth and myself are certainly enjoying the game you're umpiring out there in Hollywood. Joey Brown is pitching them right across the platter every time. And it's a great show from the stands there. At the end of the first inning, they made a point that certainly meant a lot to me. That was when they talked about Lux Flakes. I've used them for years to cut down on runs. Not the home runs that Babe Ruth hits either. I mean the stocking runs that hit me. Ah, oh, that's right, Claire. I saw a box of Lux on the kitchen shelf last night. Were you in the kitchen dieting again? No, no, no. I didn't even go near the ice box. I was looking for the sport page of the paper you threw out. You see, we're getting into baseball season very fast here. According to my scores today, my prediction of the last three or four days are showing that we're going to have a great season with plenty of thrills. Philadelphia Nationals beat the Boston Bees in the first game today. They played 11 innings and won by 2 to 1. And in the second game, they won by 1 to nothing. The Athletics beat the Senators 4 to 3, imagine, in 11 innings. Babe, if you're going to tell them who is going to win the pennant, I'm through. Well, I might be through myself. Suppose you tell them. Well, on his radio program the other night, I heard Babe Ruth say the Cardinals would win it in the National League and the Yanks in the American. 
But I noticed he made no predictions on his golf game. Have you heard anyone predict a golf game right? I've been playing golf for seven years. I think it's a great idea for a ball player to have two sports. But even if he has two, don't try to combine them. But when you're playing baseball, stick to baseball. But on the off-season, I think golf is a great conditioner for your legs. That may be true, dear, but very often I've heard you come off the golf course saying, baseball certainly is a great game. All right, Clara, you win. Good night, Mr. DeMille, and thank you for letting us play on your league program tonight. I think if anyone deserves the pennant, it's the Lux Radio Theater League. Good night. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Babe Ruth. We're back in Hollywood now with Joey e. Brown, Helen Chandler, Roscoe Carnes, and William Frawley in Alibi Ike. Sick at heart because Dolly broke their engagement, Farrell went out the next day and pitched a losing game. Pitched so badly it aroused suspicion in the minds of Cap and the owner of the club. They've gone to his room to question him. They find him slumped dejectedly in an armchair. Ike, we want to talk to you. Yeah? Well, I don't want to talk to you. No, no, just a minute, son. Don't you feel well? Yeah, I feel all right. Well, is there anything we can do? Yeah, you can get out of here and let me alone. You know, Farrell, that was a pretty bad game you pitched today. Looked like you weren't even trying. What do you mean I wasn't trying? I'd answer that door if I were you. I was just going to. Well, what do you want? The chief told me to give you this envelope. Hmm? You'll catch on when you open it. So long, kid. Who was that, Farrell? Well, I don't know. Never seen him before. Brought me a letter. Well, he didn't look like a postman to me. Why don't you open it? All right, I will. Gosh, it's getting so a fella can't even open his mail in private. I... Hey, what's this? I'll tell you what it is, Mr. Farrell. It's a roll of greenbacks. Let me see that. Look, Tom, a half a dozen thousand-dollar bills. A half dozen thousand-dollar bills? What? Say, that's that's $6,000, ain't it? Yeah, and there seems to be a little note attached to it. Listen to this, Cap. Nice going, kid. Keep up the good work. Hmm, well, how do you like that? What about it, Farrell? Well, I don't know nothing about it. Gosh. Say, they must have thought that I was losing that game on purpose for them. Who sent this? Well, I don't know. I, I can't remember his name. Oh, you can't. Farrell, I never thought you'd do a dirty trick like this. Say, you don't think I threw the game? No, this is just a coincidence. If it wasn't for the scandal, I'd let you explain it to the judge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Say, I wouldn't throw a game if my mother was playing on the other side. You won't have a chance in this club. Pack your things and get out. And if you ever put on a baseball suit again, I'll put stripes on it for you. You mean... You mean I'm canned? Yeah, and it starts right now. All right, then let it start. A couple of fine fellas you are... When I was winning, you thought I was a hero. And then the first time I lose a game in two months, you come around claiming I'm a crook. Well, you can keep your ball club. I'm through with you for good. Now get out of here. Get out of here and let me pack my suitcase. Fine fellows they are. I'll show them. I'll... Frank Farrell. Frank Farrell, huh? wait. What? Frank, wait. Oh, hello, Mrs. Finley. Where do you think you're going? I'm going back to Holgate. That's where I'm going. Oh, no, you're not. No? I just spoke to Cap. I told him the real reason why you lost that game. Because you was worried sick about Dolly. They want you back, Farrell. Well, I ain't going. You got to come back, for Dolly's sake, if not your own. Dolly. Gosh, she don't care if I never come back. Yes, she does. Yeah? I spoke to her long distance last night. She's been almost frantic since she walked out on you. Well, gee, if you think that... I don't think. I know. But if you go off now, you'll be disgraced. And if I tell Dolly that your comeback depends on her, she'll be back tomorrow cheering for you. But do you... Do you think she'll really forgive me? Sure. If you'll promise to give up those alibis. Well, promise? Gee, I'd get right down on my knees now. Only I got such a bad case of Charlie Horse. Oh, uh, <laughs> never mind that. Come on back to the hotel. Cap and Mr. Johnson are there waiting for you. And we're sorry, son. Yeah. We should have known better than to think you'd throw a game. Oh, shucks, that's all right. 
It's all over as far as I'm concerned. But it isn't. Not yet. I want to get those crooks and get them right. Do you know where to find them? Sure I do. At their clubhouse. Okay. I want you to go and see them the day before your next game. And tell them you're going to throw it. But you won't do it unless their man meets you with the money just before the game. Then we'll have a couple of federal men there and catch them red-handed, giving you the dough. Oh, boy, say, that's pretty slick. I'll be, I'll be pitching next Thursday. I'll go and see him Wednesday night. Just why do you want the money in advance? Well, I'll tell you, they're looking at me funny. I gotta have that dough so I can get out fast if they do come after me. Are you trying to put the cross on us, Farrell? Say, ain't I done everything you told me to so far? Okay. We'll have the dough for you. Now, scram. Sure. Well, good night, boys. Don't forget. Well, what do you think, Chief? He's pulling a fast one on us, but he's not going to get away with it. We got everything sunk on tomorrow's game. If Farrell wins, it means the pennant for the Cubs. Farrell isn't going to win, Lefty, because Farrell isn't going to pitch. Huh? You and Charlie are going to pay Mr. Farrell a little visit tonight, see? Don't mess him up if you can help it, but get him away from the hotel. You know what I mean, Lefty? Yeah. Maybe a little chloroform will help. Handle it any way you want. But get him out to the farm and see that he don't wake up until the game's on. Leave it to me, boss. When I get finished with him, he'll be lucky if he ever wakes up. P.R. Pepe, Harold disappears. Ace Cup pitcher disappears on even big game. Read all about it, Pepe. But I tell you, Beth, something has happened to him. Yeah. Well, something else will happen to him if he doesn't show up for the game. Oh, game? All you think about is the game. What worries me is Francis. Oh, now calm yourself, Dolly. He'll be all right. He'll probably show up at the last minute with an alibi. Oh, but he isn't all right. He'd never do a thing like this. Oh, if I only knew where he was. Come on. It's almost time for the game. Yes, sir, folks. It's a great game. At the end of the fourth inning, the Cubs are trailing the Giants by one run. Now it's a shame that Farrell is near to pitch Turn today. Turn that off, Charlie. No sure. Hmm. I think the sap is waking up. No. Oh, oh, oh. Hiya, Farrell. Huh? Hey. Take it easy, boy. Lay down there. Hey, what is this? Just a little game we got up, Frank, and you're it. Where, where am I? Why, this is the health farm, Sonny. We brought you out here for your health. My health? Say, quit kidding me. I got to get to the ballpark. Boy, you're so far from the ballpark, you'll do well to get there by next season. Oh, I will, will I? Get him, Charlie. Come here, you. Look at that. Now, sit down. Uh, That's better. Now, Farrell, if you're a good boy, you can go home. Just like you come here. All in one piece. You get it? Yeah, okay, boys. I guess you win. Now you're showing sense. Uh, Have a drink. Me? Say, I wouldn't touch that stuff. I... Well, maybe I will have one, thanks. Say when, Farrell. I'll pour it myself if you don't mind. Sure. Here. Thanks. Gosh, the bottle's almost empty. Pretty color when you hold it up to the light, ain't it? I don't pay much attention to the outside of the bottle. Look at there. It's, it's all greenish. Boy, sure is pretty. Huh? Let me see it. Sure. Take a good look, mister. What a game, what a game! It's the last half of the ninth inning, folks, and the Cubs are at last. There's two runs behind and there's two outs, but there's a man on second, and that's foul down there is going mad. It looks as if the Cubs are licked, but you never can Right, two! Well, it looks like the finish, Perry. Yeah, here goes the pennant cap. Wait till I find that guy, Farrell. I'll kill him. So help me, I'll murder him with my bare hands. Oh, three! Oh, three and two on Mac with a pitcher coming up. I'll have to put in a pinch hitter if I get the chance. Hey! Hey, Cap! Yeah! Look! Who is that? <laughs> Holy... Why, it's Farrell. Hiya, Cap! Hiya, Gary! Come hey, here. Fellas? Come here, you. Where have you been? Don't ask me now. Just give me a bat, that's all. Give me a bat! Ball four! Take the base! That's what's up to me, Cap. Hey, somebody give me a bat! Wait a minute, wait a minute, Farrell. Listen to me. Are you on the level? Do you want to win this game? Do I want to win it, guys? Let go of me. All right, but remember this. You've got to get a hit. Two runs will tie the score, and there's two men on. I know it. If you strike out or pop a fly, I'll murder you. Oh, listen, Cap. I'll suck that kill so hard, it'll rip the horse hide off of it. Let me out of there. Hand her up! Hand her up! 
That's me, Ump. Farrell, pinch hitting for Rossi. Farrell, batting in place of Rossi. Folks, all right there, Mr. Eckhart. Just put her in there and duck. Right one. You're right, Ump. Looked all right to me, too. Get up to the plate. Okay, okay. Gee, I hope he can put another one in the same place. Right play. My gosh, he did it. Two strikes, huh? Hey, I better get down to business. Don't worry, Cap. Only takes one to smack it. Get in the batter's box. He hit it. He hit it. Double, double, double. Look at him go. Two runs in. Cap, he ain't stopped the third. He's stretching it. He's stretching it into a homer. Come on, come on. Slide, you dumb stuff. Four slide. Save, save, he saved. A homer. That gives us a game, Cap. And the pennant. Come here, Farrell. Yep. Farrell, that was terrific. Oh, hey, well I work my I... hand. Oh, shucks, that was easy. I didn't even knock it over the fence. Yeah. Yeah. We did it, Tom. We did it. I'll say you did it. And listen, we got that crook, Crawford. We traced the money to him and nabbed him a few minutes ago. Nice work, Mr. Johnson. I'll help you get the rest of them myself. Oh, Francis. Oh, Francis. Dolly. <laughs> Oh, gosh, you come back. Of course I did. And, oh, Francis, I was so worried about you, but, oh, but you're safe, aren't you, darling? Safe? Say, I was safe a mile. <laughs> and, and, Dolly, if, if you'll stick by me, I'll, I'll be a new guy. From now on, I'll change completely. Honest, I will. Oh, Francis, of course I'll stick by you. And, and the engagement is on again? Oh, yes, Francis. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dolly, I'll never alibi myself again as long as I live. Hey, let us through here. Hey, Farrell, Farrell, give us a story for the paper, will you? Boy, sure. What do you want to know, boys? Well, I want to know why you let two strikes go by without moving your bat. Why? Say, how'd you like to be hitting when you got a big cinder in your eye? Game's over and won, but we play an extra inning a little later with Joe E. Brown and Helen Chandler. When Paramount Studios decided to make a picture called Artists and Models, they enlisted the services of one of the country's most versatile illustrators, Russell Patterson, creator with John Hell Jr. of the famous flapper type. You've seen his drawings many times in our leading publications, but his talents go much further than the drawing board. He's created stage sets, costumes, men's styles, industrial designs, pioneered in plastic photography, and is largely responsible for the current popularity of puppet shows. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Patterson. Thank you, Mr. DeMille, but I'm only one of the several illustrators who'll be working in artists and models. By that, I, I mean you'll actually see on the screen James Montgomery Flagg, John Legata, McClellan Barkley, Arthur William Brown, Jefferson McAmer, and Rube Goldberg. A fine group of artists, but what about the models? Well, it, it's difficult to find perfect models, even in Hollywood. Since we started our search for beauty, Mr. Roy Walsh, the director, Mr. Louis Gensler, the producer, and Mr. Leroy Prince, the dance director of Artist Models, for more than a thousand girls. Uh, we wanted about 100 of the most beautiful models. You'd be surprised at the small number in this group who met our requirements. What are the requirements? Well, I would say four in number. Grace, the ability to wear clothes, figure, and, uh, of course, the beauty of the face. Uh, why it's so hard to pick outstanding girls today is because most of them are standard types. They all want to look alike, and we look for individual types. Uh, beauty, like everything else, seems to run in cycles. After the war, there was the collegiate and then the flapper types. The platinum blondes, the redheads, and last year the brunettes had their day. And this year? Oh, I would say the raw, the, the smooth-haired, dark, natural blonde with blue eyes and sunburned skin. I think she's the typical American girl of 1937. Now, since you preach individuality, I suppose you'd hesitate to tell the girls in our radio audience what kind of clothes to wear. Well, that's like a doctor trying to cure a patient without knowing the ailment. Uh, I would recommend the best fashion magazines and to follow the best-dressed picture stars. And above all, as much of one's own personality as possible. Uh, I can safely say that whatever they wear, women will keep on caring for their clothes in the most effective, economical way there is. 
with uh, Lux Flakes. Lux is the safest, surest wardrobe care I know of. And that's why we're using it in orders and models. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Thank you, Miss Patterson. In just a few minutes, Joe E. Brown boards a plane and flies from Hollywood to Chicago. But we still have time to bring back Joe and Helen Chandler to answer their curtain call. All right, Helen. And remember, Joe, no alibis. <laughs> Thanks, C.B. Of course, I'm not in very good voice. Beginning already? Uh, now what's the matter? Did the play take it out of you? Play? Gosh, no, but I've got to protect my voice for tomorrow. Didn't you hear, Mr. DeMille? Joe's going to Chicago to become a radio announcer. He's describing the game there tomorrow between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. Uh, Helen, it's nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> How long are you going to be a sports commentator, Joe? Oh, about a month, I guess. Unless I find that I bit off more than I can chew. Mm, I'd say that was impossible. Huh? <laughs> Cut it out, will you? No, Joe, mm. I think it'd be awfully nice if you'd say something about our product. Product? Mm. What product? You don't know what our product is? Well, it seems that I do kind of recollect hearing tell of it. Yes, of course you do. Why, well, everybody uses it for keeping clothes nice. You know, and washing dishes. Clothes? Mm -hmm. Washing dishes? You know, Joe. <laughs> you know, it, it comes in a box. You get it at the grocery store. Big letters on it. L-U-X. L-U-X. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> oh, 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 Lux, sure. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so in the first place instead of beating around the bush? <laughs> Guys, our house is just about filled with Lux. I say, those flakes are a home run in the ninth inning with two out and the bases loaded. Of course... Of course, I don't do the washing, but it seems no, to no, me... No, 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 that's that... enough. That's enough. Don't spoil it. <laughs> Joe, I, I understand you're a sports writer, too. Yes, yes. I'm writing a column for the Los Angeles Examiner. They picked the craziest name for my column, though. They, they call it Saying a Mouthful. <laughs> Gosh, that don't seem to fit me. <laughs> Not if it's only a column, Joe. <laughs> oh, you too, huh? Yeah, it ought to be a full page. Oh, I see. And Helen... Uh, I'll, just before I kiss you, good, I mean, before we say, uh, Dolly, I, I mean, guys, there I'm all confused. <clears throat> before I walk off the field, I want to wish a speedy recovery to one of baseball's immortals, now in Lakeside Hospital, Cleveland. He was banged up pretty badly in an accident the other day, and I know that you all join me in wishing the best to a great sportsman, our friend, Tris Speaker. And now, CB and everyone, including you, Helen, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, thank you. Goodbye, Alibi. <laughs> Mr. Brown, Miss Chandler, our thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Melville Ruiz. The program arranged for you next Monday night will be revealed in a moment by Mr. DeMille. Tonight's cast included Wally Mayer as Mac, Leora Thatcher as Bess Finley, Cy Kendall as Crawford, Lou Merrill as club owner, Joe Franz as Lefty, Charles Emerson as reporter, Frank Nelson as radio announcer, Ross Forrester as Tex, Ingeborg Tillish as telephone operator, and Marion Dennis as telephone girl. Joe E. Brown appeared through courtesy of David L. Lowe Productions, Louis Silver's 20th Century Fox, where he was in charge of music for the new film, That I May Live. Mr. DeMille, Mr. Carnes, and Mr. Frawley, Paramount. Mr. Frawley's new picture is High, Wide, and Handsome, and Mr. Carnes, Night of Mystery. Just a reminder, as you know, many localities switch to daylight saving time next Sunday. If you are not affected by daylight saving time, this program will come to you one hour earlier, beginning next Monday night. And here's Mr. DeMille. Next Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater brings you two of the most outstanding personalities Hollywood has ever given the world. Robert Taylor and Irene Dunn. Our play, Magnificent Obsession, based on Universal's picture from the celebrated novel by Dr. Lloyd C. Douglas, one of the most inspired stories of our day. Our radio version will find both stars resuming the same roles they filled with such distinction on the screen. Miss Dunn as Helen Hudson, Mr. Taylor as Bob Merrick. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Taylor and Irene Dunn in Magnificent Obsession. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>